everyone, and welcome to the new Optics Plot 2020, an innovative all-in-one platform that showcases many of the most popular Optics EQ features, while also positioning the standard and surface distance plots side by side for quick viewing and easy comparison. This video is a companion piece to the much more detailed written instructional that can be found on the Optics EQ website, but we wanted to video highlight some of the new features so you can get a better understanding of what the platform can do. First off, all of the traditional basic features of the original Optics plot are available, but as you can see, there is now a side-by-side -side view of the standard and surface distance plots, so you can quickly notice how similar or different they are based on each horse's position on both plots. Obviously, the more similar the two plots are, the more interpretable the race. You'll also recognize the same header from the previous version of Optics Plot. And here you can see the race info along with the plot fit, pace contention rating, and speed rate for the race. The Optics RPM underneath also remains the same, listing each horse's preferred run style in color-coded fashion so you can see how a horse's style fits with his or her position on the plot. There is also an optics fig range listed so you can know what optics fig it should take to win the race. In this example of a green plot fit, the horse's positions have hardly changed with just some minor variations when going from standard to surface distance in terms of positioning and finishing ability. Being able to quickly see this allows you to decide whether or not you want to dig deeper into the race. So in addition to the side-by-side -side view of the two plots, we've also added a pass three run lines grid right on the screen so you can get quick access to key form cycle information for each horse in the race. The info listed here is pretty self-explanatory, but note that we've also included fields for optics notes keywords and our newest feature, optics alerts, which will call out various form cycle positives if you hover over the alert you'll see what each code means for that horse. In addition, various parts of the run line grid are color coded and or shaded, spotlighting key information like optics notes letter grades, finish position, and optics figs that fit in today's range. We've also enhanced the sliding V bars, allowing for a more dynamic way to use our past performance data, while also adding new categories like quad percentage and class competition. Remember that a horse's data is relative to the other horses in the race, so anything that charts above zero is a positive, while anything below is a negative. In the article that accompanies this video, we walk you through in detail a race from the 2019 summer meeting at Del Mar, where we put the new Optics Plot 2020 into action, capitalizing on the fact that for most of the meet, there was a pronounced outside bias during sprint races on the main track. Because of that, we handicapped the race looking at the horses from the outside in, and we were able to quickly eliminate runners based on negative optics RPM data, as well as unfavorable plot positions, all while looking for horses who were going to get the best trip on the outside part of the track. I don't use this example as a way of red boarding, but rather to illustrate how optics plot 2020 can really help you isolate strong plays. It was a three horse race according to the optics plot, yet one of those horses was the favorite who was going to be on the worst part of the track. Anytime you can find a good reason to take on the favorite, you are getting the best of it. So note that we are using the results version of optics plot 2020 here so you can see exactly what happened. This is yet another great feature that allows you to go back and look at all of the results from every optics EQ track available order to see where the winner came from and how the race was won. So in this case, the plot fit was yellow, which meant that the race shape was fairly interpretable, but number two, excavation, a route horse cutting back, fell off the standard distance plot because he hadn't sprinted in a very long time. I was okay with this because he was listed in red on the optics RPM, making him an eventual toss for me at a short price. The contention was a snowflake and the speed rate was a zero. So we weren't really looking at a contentious or fast pace, but the two EP horses had serious negatives. Number two excavation had the red optics RPM fit, as mentioned, and 
number four Papa Turf has coughed up easy leads in his previous two races against cheaper animals. So let's dig in and look at the field from the outside in. As mentioned, number seven, Puriano, was a solid square on both plots and drawn outside. He had a poor C grade in his last race, but note the keywords, rush, dual, saved, FTQ, first to quit. As mentioned, the inside was not where you wanted to be at Del Mar, so I can easily dismiss that bad performance against tougher animals. Before that poor race, he ran a winning optics fig against protected starter foes, so I immediately pegged him as a strong contender given his plot position and his outside post. Number six for Extreme looked a lot like Puriano. He was a solid square on both plots and drawn favorably outside. His last two speed figs were on the slow side, but I like that he earned a B minus two back against 20K foes and a B plus against 16K foes before that. I excused his most recent C race since it came against tougher allowance types. I was a little worried about the downward progression on optics figs, but if you looked at the class competition V bar, see that he was running against better, run better runners, so I was accepting of his recent form, making him a contender in this cheaper race. Number five, Joe Jackson was definitely getting some class relief, but his position on both plots was just no good, especially that big circle on surface distance. Those types rarely win. Number four, Papa Turf was going to be in front, but he was a big circle on both plots, and he had just finished third twice before at the lower 8K level including two back where he was all alone on the lead. So why would today's result be any different against tougher company? Number three, Mo Dinero was a small circle and a small square in quadrant four on the standard and surface distance plots, respectively, not where you wanted to be in a race that wasn't going to have a fast pace. Number two, Excavation, the second choice, had been running around two turns, including a perfect trip win at the lower 8K level two back. But when he tried this level, couldn't replicate that form, despite having the race flow in his favor. What I really didn't like about him, however, was the fact that he was a poor red fit on the Optics RPM, which means that his run style did not sync up well with where he was on the plot. I had to take a stand at sh against at short odds. Number one, best two minutes was the favorite, and I knew he was going to get the worst of it down on the inside. He looked good on both Optics plots, but notice he didn't look much better than number six, Rick Stream, or number seven, Piriano, both of whom were going to be on the better part of the track outside of him. I also didn't like that his optic figs were trending downward off a big race three back, where he got a favorable race flow. Sure, he might be good enough to beat me based on the class drop, but given the negatives and the fact that he was the favorite, I really wanted to beat. So what did I do? I thought the two outside horses looked terrific on the plots, and they had other positive attributes while I had knocks against the first two choices. So I bet number seven, Puriano, who was the better price to win in place, and I boxed him with number six for extreme in the exacta. The race played out exactly as the plot predicted with number six and number seven getting the best tracking trips and finishing the strongest while the favorite, best two minutes, spun his wheels inside in the second choice excavation was taken out of his game with that red optics RPM designation and just ran on late for third. Unfortunately, I didn't cash my win ticket because Puriano couldn't wear down Rick Stream, who was ahead of him every step of the way with a very good aggressive ride. But Puriano did finish second, he paid a very generous $7 to place, while the 6 7 Exacta returned $25.90 for a buck. You can go to opticseq.com to read the full article to also find out more information and tutorials on the new Optics Plot 2020, along with other specific examples of the new Optics Plot 2020 platform in action. Thanks for watching, and good luck at the races.